Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity video. In this video we're going to be, instead of doing a tutorial, we're going to be watching the Unity YouTube channel to find different snippets about ECS, the job system, burst compiler, the whole dots stack, because there's not that many resources out there on YouTube about it. There are a few other creators doing videos on it and I've done a few videos, but I'm not, you know, experienced enough with it to do really complex subjects. So I'm trying to self-teach, you know, how to use ECS and, you know, how to think in an ECS kind of mindset. And, you know, I spend a lot of time Googling around about this kind of stuff to try and learn new ways. But one really good way is by watching the videos Unity release themselves. Um, because whenever they release new technology, whether it's, you know, uh, dots or virtual reality, augmented reality, graphics, audio, anything, they always release videos on it on their YouTube channel, which is really useful. Sometimes they're tutorials, sometimes they're just people giving talks, and the talks usually consist of, you know, little how to get started and tips and tricks, which are really useful. So if you haven't already, go and subscribe to them, and if you haven't already, go and subscribe to me. Now let's get to the video. But of course, first I've got to thank my patrons, a special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, CZ, Art Farrell, Buddha Ray, and Remy Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out by following on any of those, it'd be greatly appreciated. Now let's get to the video. So the plan for this video is that I'm going to show you different snippets of things I found on the Unity YouTube channel about dots. I've got loads of videos open. I'm going to, you know, show you different parts of them. I'm going to put all the links down below so you guys can go watch them fully in your own time. I'm just going to be talking about interesting things that are coming up, things you should go and research, because... You know, I could make a video on every little part of these, but it'd take ages for me to make all those videos, and some things are easy enough just to read anyway that don't need actual tutorials, so let's get into video number one. So the first part I've picked out is from their roadmap. So the roadmap is where they talk about upcoming features and what they plan on doing at what time. Obviously now it's 2019 as of making this video, we're quite near the end, we're in October, nearly November, and they obviously say what version they are planning on bringing out certain features. Now entities, so the entity component system dots, they plan on releasing it production ready in version 2020.1, which is obviously going to be the first version they release in 2020, which will be, you know, hopefully at the start of the year, hopefully in the first few months. I don't know the exact release date yet. They probably don't either. They have maybe a rough estimate, but I'm not quite sure. And this is when they are basically trying to say, okay, our code for ECS is not going to change dramatically to the point where you have to actually go back over your own code and change everything. So it's more stable. Uh, when it's production ready it's not in preview and it also means that they say it's ready to use in actual games because currently they don't recommend you use ecs for actual games it's more of a you know learn how to use it make some prototypes but if you want to release an actual game you're meant to wait until this happens because uh, this is when they're telling you you know it's all stable we've you know tested it obviously there'll still be bugs there's always bugs with software but it'll be stable enough for you to actually make real games with so that's one thing to keep in mind guys Early 2020 is when Entities is actually going to be, you know, viable to use. And I'm probably going to make a lot more videos using it when it's uh, released in version 1.0. So next is the dots netcode. So this is also coming in 2020.1 and I think they're actually going to release it in preview before then so you can actually access this project they've made. Essentially it's for making multiplayer games using ECS because one benefit of ECS is that it's really good to use in multiplayer. It's a lot easier than using object oriented and I'm not going to get into those fine details in this video. It's more of an overview but look out for this project. This is the one thing I'm looking forward to the most right now is getting my hands on this FPS project. I just want to know how they did certain stuff, how they did UI in ECS, how they animations i understand the animations is currently in preview uh, or it's not even available at all actually in public i don't think uh, and ui i have no idea how you do ui with ecs pure i know there are certain mono behavior workarounds but it's not ideal it's not what you want to be doing so when i get my hands on this project just expect a video on it because i'm going to be dissecting the hell out of it to understand how it works and maybe even building my own prototypes based on features they put in here like they've got the aiming the shooting i kind of get how you do that right now and I could make like a really bad prototype, but I want to know, you know, how do you do it in multiplayer? And is it worth then me trying to make a multiplayer game using dots? If you guys want to see that, let me know down below. When I know how to do it and I've got my hands on with this project, you know, it'll be a possible video idea. So yeah, let's continue. So I know I just mentioned about the netcode and the dots multiplayer, but there's a bit more about it here on this video that I'm going to link down below too. I'm going to link all the videos down below, as I said. So they talk a bit about client-side prediction, a bit about, um, you know, how to do some simple multiplayer stuff. And I don't think we have access to it right now. I haven't messed around with it. If we do, it must be in preview and I haven't seen the package for it, um, or at least any tutorials or documentation on it. It probably does exist very briefly, but when 2019.3 uh, comes out, I'm sure we'll get a lot more about it. And also when we get hands on with the multiplayer um, FPS project, then we'll actually, well, it's not actually an FPS, actually, it's a third person over the shoulder. But uh, anyway, uh, when we get our hands on with it, we can look at how they do movement, animation, um, you know, syncing stuff over the network, shooting, UI. There's so much I want to know about this, and I'm sure you guys do too. Um, 
if you look, they show an example here of them running around and shooting and people joining and, you know, they've got like a debug thing at the bottom left. Now, I'm assuming if we look in here, all these um, sub scenes have to be ECS, right? So the only stuff not in ECS is like the scene, the lighting, obviously that's kind of um, some of the stuff that hasn't been made in ECS yet. But apart from that, I mean, we've got the, the hood, which is obviously the heads up display, the UI. I just want to know how they um, make that store, for example, this entity's health when it's in the ECS. I, that's the kind of stuff I want to know about. If you guys actually do know, let me know down below, please. Uh, I can't find much about it online or on the forums, but when this uh, sample comes out, we'll be going through this on, in a video, maybe, and then even building up a prototype afterwards just to see um, what we can do with this after we, you know, break it down and build it back up again. But yeah, this is something I'm really looking forward to, multiplayer in dots. Then next, we actually have a turn-based game, which is, uh, I mean, can be multiplayer, but you would have to, you know, think about how to use multiplayer and this. This is just single player currently. But uh, this talk is really good about showing you, because normally, if you think about ECS, a lot of people think, oh, everything's in the update loop. So how do I do, uh, for example, you know, turn-based games when it's not all about the update loop? And that's what he talks about in this. You still, uh, here's a good picture of it. So for example, this is what it's normally like. You have a game loop and you do stuff, right? So you take an input, you update, and then you render the screen and then you keep doing that, right? That's the game loop. But if you want to do um, turn-based, there might be certain things that you don't do until something else has happened. So for example, as it says here, get the input and then uh, if the input's null, then, or not null, sorry, then update, otherwise just render. So we only update when they press stuff. It's that kind of idea, you know? You've got to, People sometimes think, oh, ECS is bad because you can't do, you know, X thing. But it's not a case of you can't do it. It's a case of you have to do it differently, which in the end will actually be a lot easier uh, when you build up a game. You know, ECS scales really well. That doesn't mean you can't use it for small games, but in big games, it's the way you see the most benefit. Um, but I feel like when people begin to understand how to use it, and that includes me too, I'm not an expert, then that's probably when um, more people move over to it. Some beginners are a bit scared about using it because they think, oh, I'm used to using object-oriented. And, you know, same, I don't know how to do a lot of things in ECS as of yet, but um, the whole point of it is it makes your life so much easier in the long run. It's it's also a lot more fun to make games because you can do things you couldn't do before. Um, or if you could do them before, it's, it was a lot of hassle. It's like the idea about, you know, in, in your game, you might have a weapon, you might have a sword, so it's got a weapon component on it. Um, and if, if you're an object oriented, you might think, all right, let's say you have edible items like a health potion that you can drink or whatever, and or consumable, whatever. And then you think, all right, I want a, a sword, but when I use it, it actually consumes it in my on my hotbar. It's like, well, uh, how do you do that? You have to have an edible weapon or a, well, weapon consumable or something. It doesn't really work. Um, you technically can do that. It's just not a very good idea. With ECS, you just put on the data you need, which also makes, um, there's another talk about this later on, about how um, it achieves the high performance and what object-oriented lacks in when it comes to performance. But anyway, yeah, he talks more about the game loop and data and then gives some good examples and then eventually actually shows it in Unity working. So if we go to the end, you know, you can go look through the code yourself. He shows how um, here you have this balloon and these like snails and when you move, it's then their turn to move and then you move and they take the move. And I'm not sure the actual uh, how the game works exactly because, you know, it's just a bit of a tech demo really. But the fact that you can do this turn-based stuff with ECS, you know, it's all about adding components and then removing components. That's what it's all about, right? Components just define what something does at, at a time. So if you have like a targeting system, you know, your player's chasing something or, you know, so you've got an enemy chasing you, um, you'll have a system for the whole moving system. And then moving the moving system needs to know where to move to. So you can add tags or sorry, components, to tell it where to move to um, when the player's in range. And then when the player's out of range, you remove that component so it no longer does it. So it's, it's no longer about just setting booleans on things and, you know, all this lot and calling functions. It's just adding and removing components and setting the data. It's, it's just a lot more uh, intuitive, really. But yeah, let's move on to the next video. Okay, so this video is about interaction because people might think, all right, so you're in ECS. How do you do, for example, a callback to on trigger enter? You know, normally you might want to, uh, for example, open a door when you walk near it. So on trigger enter the collider, you open it. And yes, there are colliders in ECS, but to actually do collisions, it's a bit different. There's no, there are no callbacks because normally the callback is to the mono behavior instance, you know, that has logic for how to do it. But your thing in the scene, your your object, your player with a you know collider on it, doesn't actually have, you know, logic. It's all data. So you actually need to kind of have a system, a way of 
um, still knowing when something collides and then knowing what to do when that happens. And this is what this, that's what this video is about. I'm going to try and, you know, not explain it myself here. I'm going to give you the videos and tell you, you know, some good resources to look at. Um, and obviously I'll make my own videos on it in the future, but it's all about, as she says in this video, you know, understand, okay, what data have you got and how do you want it to be? So if you've got a door, what is a door? You don't want to make a door tag, uh, a door component. You want to make, you know, what makes up a door? And then when you make something else, it's all about building up the Lego bricks kind of idea. So, you know, you don't want to have a door. You want to have, for example, something that's openable or interactable. Like, you know, even in Unity now with object oriented, it's good to get into the ECS mindset of making uh, components and, you know, your game objects to store loads of different components that makes them up. You don't want to have a door script. You want to have a interactable script and then an event that what happens when you want when you interact with it because that allows you to build up modularized modularize there we go uh entities you don't want to have to think okay i've got a door so i write a door script and then you make a chest and you make a chest script and you're like wait a second but chests and doors you know they both open uh, when i interact with them so you're just copying and pasting code between the two classes it's all about abstraction well not abstraction sorry but yeah abstracting away logic into the systems that uh it's concerned about that's why in ECS you have lots of systems that do their own little job so that when something's wrong, you know exactly which system to go fix. And if you fix it there, it fixes it everywhere. And then when you do unit testing to test your code works, you just unit test each system. You don't have dependencies on other systems where you have to mock them and pass them in. As, I mean, okay, I might be wrong here, but you might have watched my, my mocking video like about how to mock uh, instances for unit testing. I haven't done unit testing with ECS much yet. I know how to do it, but there's some bugs at the moment and it's obviously in previous, so they're not gonna get that fixed <laughs> just yet. But as far as I'm aware, you'll never need to mock an instance of a class because you're not gonna have interfaces um, like for different systems. All systems are completely unique. Uh, as far as I'm aware, okay, I'm, I'm gonna keep saying, don't take my word for uh, gospel. It's not completely correct. Uh, I, I don't know 100% how things are going to be when they change stuff in, you know, Entities 1.0. The way you do things might be, you know, different, but they won't be completely different. Um, but yeah, they also talk about um, the cost of doing things, because obviously if you do things a lot, even in ECS, you're still, you know, you have limited resources. It's nice and all being able to have high performance, but you don't want to just waste it. You know, you still want to be as performant as possible to get the most out of it. Um, so it's like, you know, if you're, for example, looping over all of a certain entity and then you're doing more loops and like that, you know, recursive looping still is, you know, it can lead to uh, frame drops or at least FPS drops, even if they're not noticeable, right? You could still stay above 60 FPS. It's just a case of, you know, the one of the huge benefits of ECS is you can run it on like um, lower spec computers that maybe don't have uh, as good of a processor just because they're making the most of multiple cores and being really efficient with data. Um, but yes, yeah, these talks are just really good. Um, this one helped a, a lot about how to handle the kind of thing when uh, with interacting between different objects. If you watched my last video with my spawner, um, I had obviously a spawner that spawns in other objects, has to convert game objects over. In my next video, I want to do a thing where those objects can then interact with things, or maybe I have another kind of object that runs after and like eats the, of those objects, like their points, and then we get points. And when I know how to do UI, I can display points on the UI. I want to just build up a little kind of example, basically. I think it's going to be pretty good. Um, but yeah, this video just keeps going on about uh, interactions and yeah, relationships. You know, what are you reading data from? What are you writing data to? And making sure to use the read only tag whenever you read data and don't write, because that's another performance uh, boost. If the compiler, if the, you know, if you're, the thing running your code knows that you're not going to be editing data on something, then it doesn't have to allow you to edit data on it. It's all about, you know, how code gets compiled. And I'm not an expert on uh, machine code at all. But what I know is if you make something read-only, it's uh, faster to access than if it's not read-only because the compiler knows it's never going to change. It's just going to be read-only. So it's a lot easier to um, deal with, basically. Now, I think that's it for this video. You know, go ahead and watch it. Let's move on to the next video. I'm gonna quickly run over this one. It's about converting your scene to dots. So I've already done a video on this. Uh, my, my ECS videos use this as well. This is how I kind of understood how to do it. The entity cache where you have your uh, scene, your subscene with your ECS objects in. They use an ECS uh, subscene for like each building, these huge buildings. So you can just toggle them on and off and um, you know work on them individually. Kind of like prefabs when you go to the prefab scene. It's kind of like that. Um, but yeah, as you, as, as you see here, they are um, showing you the difference between entities and game objects. So 
the mesh renderer is the render mesh. I think the the reason they called it that is so that you don't get confused. If they called it mesh renderer and then mesh render, it'd be a bit confusing. Um, then obviously transform has now been split up because you know some things might have a position and a rotation. Um, I think this LTW is scale local to world. It means local to world. Um, you know your scale relative to the world because um, in ECS you don't really have parents like you would normally in a hierarchy. Uh, there still are ways to parent and child objects, but at the end of the day, normally you just have tons of entities on you, and then you can still reference other entities. But um, how how you build things is kind of is a bit different. I'm I'm still not sure how UI works because I'm used to having a hierarchical hierarchical yeah uh, tree structure for UI. So you might have like the hot bar on the hot bar. You have hot bar slots, and I hope hot bar slots each have a hot bar icon or something, right? So how do you do that in ECS? I'm not sure yet um how ui works or if they even will make ui of ecs but apparently you can do that stuff pure so yeah i'm looking forward to knowing how to do that um but yeah this video is just about this is kind of what i had here um the seconds to spawn thing i changed it a bit but this is where i learned how to do the object conversion because it's kind of important you know how do you make for example there if you sh if you look here uh they do make an object spawner i don't know here they, sh they show it here um, these cubes are spawners and they drop these different objects. So the way I did it was just spawning off these cubes randomly. They do it so they drop um, a random prefab in this list of prefabs and that prefab has physics so it falls to the ground, you know, it's whatever. But this video is useful if you want to look at how to uh, convert your normal game to dots. It's pretty useful. And finally, this video looks to be the same, converting your game to dots, but it's not actually the same. The other one is about literally converting scene data to you know dots data this is about the mindset right Hit, like having uh, it explains how the data allocation is and accessing but it's more about as you see here he talks about um you know how would you normally have a mono behavior for example you know player move and look which already sounds horrible looking at it you've got your camera reference your layer mask with the ground the player help you know, all this stuff that's just you're you're not having the single responsibility principle here because it's caring about too many different systems are all intertwined and then look you go over here and you make uh, an enemy and an enemy has speed but so does the player and health and you have health and then rigid body and rigid body and projectile behavior has speed which and the player has speed and lifetime and you know this all these different things uh, lifetime is unique for them rigid body shared so you know you have the same stuff all over the place when it can be shared right so he goes on to talk about uh, how certain things are the same essentially so why don't you go put them into their own little components and own little functions and different um parts so in ecs he uh, goes in here and if i just move over to where he does for example a system uh, da -da. there we go so he's made a system using jobs kind of like how i did and he has uh, position rotation and he has a system simply for rotating things to face the way they should be facing so then anything in your game that needs to rotate to face a certain direction this system handles that you know you don't have to write the code again in different places or um you know best case scenario currently is you write helper functions that you can call if you have the same code everywhere you know you can um, at least reuse that one function but that's not ideal why don't you just have it all run in one place you know it's, it's uh makes more sense so yeah um, I think that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it useful. Uh, go watch as many of these videos as you can, you know, maybe even learn some things that I missed out in these videos now skipping through and, you know, you might be able to teach me something and I can make videos on it. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to Dots. It's my most, you know, the thing I'm looking forward to the most upcoming in Unity. Uh, I'll, anytime there's a beta or a new alpha version for Dots, I want to try it, um, you know, try and learn the most out of it. I'll try and be more active on the Unity forums to uh, ask questions about it and learn because it's something I really care about. But yeah, I hope you guys are looking forward to the videos too, like I am. Um, but yeah, feel free to give me video suggestions down below just about, you know, content on the channel, whether it's Unity game development or not. It doesn't matter, right? Just any coding or development stuff, uh, feel free to ask below. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching and goodbye.